Had the Anthem ABM90 for a little while now, it's time to knock out a review. Uh, one thing I do want to call attention to though is while I am new to having the ABM90 in the home theater system, I am not new to Anthem products. I've been using and singing the praises of Anthem for pretty much two years now. I did an ABM70 uh, from formerly Marantz equipment, uh, upgraded my theater two years ago. I since added an STR, Anthem STR preamp to my living room. I run my whole house zone audio now on an MDX-16. I obviously like the brand and I think it has some virtues, uh, but I was very much looking forward to kind of completing the mountaintop, the pinnacle upgrade uh, within the Anthem product line and for the home theater with the 70 to 90 swap out. I think it's worth mentioning as well uh, in terms of like, what are you expecting to get out of a 70 to a 90 uh, upgrade? One of course is the ability to independently process and equalize and run arc uh, room calibration on four independent subwoofers. The AVM70 tops out at two. Uh, and the rest of it really boils down to audio quality, build quality, DAX, uh, internal component tree, and those other types of aspects. So when it comes to the audio quality side, I will sing the praises of Anthem all day long. When I made the upgrade from my uh, uh, prior Marantz AV77 level preamplifier, to the AVM70, I was floored. I felt that I could hear that even before doing Arc Genesis. I could hear it right off the bat. And now coming from the 70 to the 90, I have to say that I feel that there is another like tangible audio improvement. I don't feel that I can measure it. I can't necessarily prove it. Um, it is somewhat anecdotal. And of course, we're all a, a little suspect to the idea uh, of wanting positive bias or confirmation bias in our purchases when we spend money on something. We want it to be better than the thing that it replaced. I don't think that what I'm experiencing though uh, is that or at least you know, the better part of it or entirely that. Um, as soon as I had the room set up with the 90, I got everything uh, set up. I ran Arc Genesis and did all of that stuff. And I started on a bunch of demo scenes that I'm very familiar with, Ready Player One race scene and a whole bunch of other things. To me, I feel like the room responded. The audio that I was experiencing it just, it, it had a slightly different presentation. Um, not to say that the 70 was bad by any means. I think the 70 is an incredible unit in its own right. But I, I do think that I'm getting something a, a step higher, uh, more audio value, clarity, detail, separation, something along those lines tangibly feels different running the 90 versus the 70. Again, listening to a bunch of demo scenes that I'm pretty familiar with and noting just additional depth or context or elements that I don't think I perceived in quite the same way with the 70. In talking about the 90 and the audio quality, that, that kind of jives with what I was, what kind of what I was expecting and what I've heard other people that have made similar moves or moved into the 90 say about their experience as well. There's another local Michigan AV enthusiast that did a 70 to a 90 upgrade and I think is feeling very similar things. I actually bought my Anthem STR uh, from somebody that had uh, was running the STR plus an AVM70 for home theater and two channel music in like an HT bypass mode uh, and ended up making the upgrade to the 90 and felt that the 90 at least meet if not exceeded the combination of the 70 and the STR both for movies and music. And if you go look at the owners forums, you look at the discussions, that sentiment is positively echoed uh, from so many 90 owners, people that actually have the unit, uh, that I feel, I feel comfortable saying that, that I really do believe that I've experienced uh, a similar quality step, a similar quality uh, improvement by going to the 90. So if you're debating this unit, you know, considering, uh, should I do a 90? Should I just save some money? Should I do a 70? I think that really boils down to the fact that if you have the money, honestly, just just get the 90. I know in my home theater experience, if I'm looking at two different options, one may be a little cheaper, I could spend a little bit more to get the other one. I like just buying the peace of mind that I got the better unit, I've got the pinnacle, I've got that mountaintop uh, type of device, and I don't have to use my room and second guess it uh, and all that. Not that I necessarily, not that I wanna just waste money unnecessarily, but I do really feel that there was, there was a value benefit here in making this change. And of course I am running four subwoofers now 
And so being able to independently EQ those subwoofers is a huge, huge benefit versus feeling the need to introduce other things, a mini DSP or other complexities to my system. I much prefer just doing it all right in the single unit there. So other virtues of the AVM90 that I wanna make sure to call out if you're considering this unit, I really do honestly feel that Anthem has one of the best web UIs for their devices uh, in the business. And this goes for the 90 actually, as well as the whole MRX uh, and both of the AVM models. I look forward to an STR upgrade someday that also includes the, the really great web UI. But you go in your local network, you go to a browser, you access your Anthem device, and I think, again, they have one of, I think, the, the most powerful, easily accessible, easily understandable, kind of well laid out configuration interfaces out there. You can manage all of the options and such that you need for the device, its setting, its inputs, and everything right there in that web UI. Of course, the unit doesn't come with much of anything, by the way, of an on-screen interface. You are able to do quite a bit, though, on the device's screen itself. But when you have the power and capability of the web UI for advanced configuration, setup, tweaking and adjustments, like you really wouldn't, I think, mess with anything else anyway. As I record this, they are in the midst of rolling out essentially a new Anthem remote control mobile app. It works on all the mobile devices that are there and it, it can even test it uh, using test flight on my MacBook. Pretty cool. I think the app itself is looking pretty great. It's gonna give you a lot of the capabilities of the web UI kind of wrapped up, of course, in a packaged mobile app. So I look forward to that hitting uh, a final release and look for another future video where I kind of do a deep dive on the app and review it itself. But that's a plus for the platform. It's looking and working good. And I think it'll be great when they do finally launch the whole public release. No review of any Anthem gear, uh, particular the ABM90 uh, is complete without talking, I think, about the merits of Arc Genesis. And to me, compared to other room correction systems out there, once again, I think this kind of resides at the top. It is very powerful software, allowing you to specify the configuration of your room with a lot of flexibility, take a plethora of integrative uh, measurements, and then of course, let you tweak the resulting behavior and apply it to the system. Arc Genesis now includes things like calculating, measuring for, and adjusting for speaker and subwoofer delay, as well as phase integration. These types of capabilities are, are, are things that normally folks would have gone to other devices to measure and verify outside of their actual uh, preamplifier or receiver type of unit. It's all built into the Anthem. And once again, I think the interface, the usability, the ease of use to learn it and harness its power is a very, very positive uh, general merit point for Arc, Arc and the Arc Genesis software let alone the, the massive customizations that are available and, and again, easy to harness in there. We have the ability to take multiple measurements. So you can do things very easily in the Anthem setup, like take a collection of measurements maybe for solo or individual use of the room, and then do a second measurement for a larger kind of a spanning measurement of the room. So if you wanna maximize the audio quality, uh, uh, the the audio equalization and correction being applied when it's just you in the space versus the family, or if you have multiple rows, you can, you can do all of that, again, with up to four flexible measurement slots. Those map over to four different profiles, essentially, available in the unit itself. And that, in conjunction with the idea of the virtual inputs, which I think is another really powerful and unique aspect of the setup uh, and configuration of the AVM90, it all just flows together. So if I take my case as an example, I use Apple TV, I use Kaleidoscape. Again, I could do two measurements. I could do a measurement for myself. I could do a measurement for the family. I can define those measurements to apply to different profiles. And then I could set up in my system an Apple TV for me, an Apple TV for the family, presenting as independent inputs, automatically linked to the specific profiles that are automatically linked to the proper measurements. So when it comes to switching between these, do the same thing for the Kaleidoscape, Kaleidoscape Solo, Kaleidoscape Family. I could present four devices in my Control 4 room switching selection. And with one tap, I can switch between these modes, I can switch between these options, where I think in a lesser processor or a, a lesser unit, you're gonna really be stuck like going into settings, 
pulling up information and trying to change and, and flip between these different modes and so on. But the combination, again, uh, multiple measurements mapped to multiple profiles and configured across multiple virtual inputs is just a, a level of configuration and accessibility that puts this, that puts this unit above and beyond uh, a lot of its other competitors. Um, I'm also very positive about like basically the general options and input, uh, input output and whatnot available on the unit. Of course, we're talking about 15 channels uh, of processing here for subwoofers, which is probably plenty, more than enough for the large majority of home theaters out there. In my space right now, I'm running a 7.4.4, and quite honestly, I don't know if and when I might ever actually introduce more speakers than that. But if you look at everything that the unit provides, I think the back panel is also one of the best in the business. The white and black color coding to very easily differentiate inputs and outputs, particularly once the unit is in your rack and maybe you're plugging and unplugging things, gives you a very easy and quick visual identification in terms of kind of what goes where and what banks on the back of the unit are what types of I.O. Three independent 12 volt trigger outputs is phenomenal and they're all adjustable of course in the software and configurable between triggering for zone one and zone two. I take, I've, I've taken advantage of that for a long time with my Anthem gear in the system. I also want to applaud the really excellent zone two capability uh, of the 90 itself. There's a zone two HDMI. So we essentially have a matrix HDMI switching capability between what would be probably your theater and a secondary zone or a living room, which is exactly how I use it. It allows me to take expensive sources like the Kaleidoscape and use them in both rooms of my house without having to buy another Strato player or buy expensive external switching uh, and all of that. The Zone 2 capability works absolutely fantastic. I also want to applaud the idea that the 90 includes, or from the very beginning actually, the 90 included the HDMI 2.1, 8K, 4K120, uh, HDMI ports, and Anthem spares no expense in this regard, meaning every single input is full 48 gigabit per second HDMI 2.1, and every HDMI output on the board as well is the same spec. So if you're running something that can take advantage of it, like me with a gaming PC that's capable of doing full 4K 120 444 color, max at 12 bit, max out that 48 gigabit per second. A lot of other uh, receivers, preamps, processors tap out at the 40 uh, gigabit per second level. I, I love the fact that Anthem, again, went all the way, full 48, all the way across the board. And also the fact that if another HDMI rev comes along, we've already seen them committed to providing HDMI board upgrades within the MRX and the AVM family. So if we really need it, hopefully the unit would have more longevity in our systems and be able to do an HDMI, whatever it might be, 2.2 or 3.0 type of upgrade in the future. I would also applaud the smart integration. Essentially, I use my home theater space and my living room space with Control 4. Anthem provides an excellent Control 4 driver with lots of command and control capability. And I haven't found myself like lacking or wanting really for anything that I might want to program the Anthem to do in the system that's not already there in the driver. And that includes, again, doing some of the complex uh, input-output selection and switching and so on to manage the AVM90 in a Zone 2 setup between two rooms. So thumbs up there. I know aesthetics are subjective, but to me, I just love the way that the Anthem gear looks nowadays. The, the face panel, the, the kind of split between the display on one side and the, the, not, the volume control knob and the buttons on the other. I think it's absolutely a piece of, <laughs> of sexy looking equipment. They use that same design aesthetic throughout the line. And I think the 90 itself just looks like a stunner in your system, in a rack, wherever it may be. Build quality is impeccable. It's hefty, it's sturdy, it's tight. It's basically a beast. You look in there through the little slats, you see like that signature anthem, like red, PCBs and stuff. It just has a design sense uh, and presentation that I, I really value. It feels, it, it, it's an expensive piece of high-end equipment with the 90, but at the same time, I feel like it, look, it looks the part and presents the part uh, at that price point.
if I think about areas for improvement or some other things that I, I could say I, I don't like about the 90, quite honestly, I find myself having a really hard time coming up with something. Some of the things that I would like to see really have a little bit more to do with Arc Genesis than the 90 itself, such as kind of beefing up the quick measure function uh, within Arc Genesis, letting us do more advanced measurements, kind of almost maybe on the level of, of adding some things that people use REW for, as well as like an all sub uh, type of measurement in quick measure. I think there's some untapped potential there. I suppose one thing that I would caution with regards uh, to the ABM 90, and this goes a little bit for the wider Anthem line in general, is while I'm a big proponent and, and I run uh, advanced and I run beta software on pretty much most of the devices that I use, even my daily driver stuff and around the household, I would probably caution folks uh, in the Anthem platform or folks with a 90 to be a little bit uh, conservative perhaps uh, about updating firmware and how you manage firmware. There is a beta program for Anthem firmware. You have to opt into it on the device. You can do that, of course, in the web UI. Um, and there is another option also to automatically apply firmware updates. I may recommend in the Anthem ecosystem that you go ahead and just turn both of those things off. Exert a little more manual control over uh, when and what you choose to upgrade the unit for, especially you know if you find yourself on a stable working firmware that's performing well and doesn't have any trouble. Again, take the conservative route with Anthem uh, and maybe wait until future updates come and they're proven to be solid and probably as well stay off the beta train when it comes to Anthem. We just recently here had a little bit of a black eye uh, within the platform where a bad beta release got out. It was, it was cutting back and really uh, negatively impacting base response and performance of the unit in people's rooms. And within the platform, there's no rollback. So the folks that got that beta were stuck kind of fighting it uh, and dealing with it for a little while. As the time of recording this, that's already been dealt with. Um, I believe there's already been new updates put out and people were singing the praises over the performance um, and the results of the latest betas. But again, general warning, turn off the auto updates, stay off the betas. I still recommend generally like staying up to date with the full public production releases as they come, but you may want to do that a little bit more deliberately, keeping in mind that when you do a, a firmware update on this device, sometimes that may come with an Arc Genesis upgrade and you may end up wanting to essentially rerun your whole calibration, your whole calibration again, which is another reason to just do it when you're ready so that the device doesn't auto update and change some things. Again, you can just take that, take that level of manual control and do everything the right way when you're ready to do it at your own pace. So I'm over the moon with this. Uh, again, I'm super happy to kind of be at the pinnacle of Anthem. When it came to my ABM 70 a while ago and even the 90 right now, I cross shopped a lot of brands there are a lot of preamplifiers and processors out there. Marantz uh, now stepping up their game. Arkham, Lingdorf, Monoprice, even Emotiva uh, is of course in the game at or around kind of this price point. But for me, I don't think anything else competes with all of the virtues of this device, the Anthem platform in general. I think it's an easy, easy win uh, above its competitors. And despite the hiccups with the, the beta firmware, I think it's proven itself to be also one of the more stable platforms. Some folks will probably respond in the comments, well, what about Rune and what about some of the things that were promised within the platform or, or promised as features and haven't come yet? Um, that one doesn't bother me too much. I'm not a Rune user, but I know some folks are really jonesing for that. We'll see if we get that and, and what other things kind of come along. This is kind of my own opinion and take on it as well, but I would, I feel very comfortable uh, buying the new unit now, despite, you know, it's been on the market for a little while. Uh, to me, I just, I don't think that we'll see new models uh, anytime soon. I think they've got some more things to do and more capability to unlock in the current models and the current platform. So I think we've got a little bit of time before an ABM successor model comes along. I think the other thing that's worth commenting on, uh, and I know folks ask me because very early on in the life of the channel, I did have an opportunity to demo a Trinoff for a little while. That was only a short-term demo. I didn't buy it, it wasn't mine, and I was only gonna have it for a very, very short matter of a few unsupported weeks. But folks, I think, are, are constantly asking me, well, the AVM 90, 7,500 bucks, what about Storm? What about Trinoff? And my answer to that is I think for this price point, 
The 90 has no peer. It has no uh, other equal. If you are going to be considering something like storm or trin off, you are at the next kind of step function of cost and also like power and capability. I think within home theater audio processing, those devices have the potential to do many, many more channels as well as do some very, very advanced and specific type of room response features and calibrations and adjustments and tweaking and so on. So if you've got like these massive, massive theater rooms, dozens of channels and, and, and a lot of integration type of challenges and such that a trin off or a storm uh, could help you overcome, then of course it's an easy choice to step up there. If you've got a fairly standard room, uh, I benefit from my, everything in my space kind of being in like the right places and it works out pretty fine. Again, I'm not going over 15 channels, I think in this space. The 90, I think really does represent a pinnacle product uh, to choose. And again, at that price point, in some ways, I don't think you can necessarily argue or, or equate a 90 to a Storm or a Trinoff because those devices exist in another echelon of price point. And if you're looking at a system with that level of capability, that level of complexity, and you have that money to spend, by all means, go get it. Go get the Storm, go get the Trinoff, be at the mountaintop of the mountaintop. But I think for a lot of folks out there, including myself, in many ways, I, I think the 90 is like an end game, uh, an end game level unit for our spaces in terms of everything that it can do and again the audio quality that it ultimately is providing. I bought my AVM90 from Audio Advice, an excellent partner for the channel. If you're looking for Anthem gear or any other home theater equipment for that matter, I would give them my strongest recommendation. Reach out to them through the links down in the description or if you give them a call, let them know that you're reaching out because Techthusiasm referred you. That provides a nice referral benefit back to the channel doesn't cost you anything and guarantees that you're still going to get excellent and fast and efficient and really great customer service. So sound off in the comments and let me know. Do you have a 90? What do you think about it? Did you upgrade your 90 from something else in the Anthem lineup? Maybe an MRX receiver or an AVM70? How did you feel about that upgrade? Have you cross-shopped these Anthem products against something else? And what do you think about how they match up against other competitive options that are available to us? Leave those comments and let's discuss. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, and come on back for a whole lot more home theater discussion and fun. I don't think my room has ever sounded better than it does right now, and I think this, this unit right here uh, is playing a big, big part in that experience. Thanks.